So what is up guys, it is Nisho here, and today we are here for the final episode of Legendary Duelist Dissected. Uh, I don't know what the upload schedule of this would be beforehand, since I'm recording it all, you know, before actually uploading. So I don't know how spread out it would be, like how long it, you know, it's been since I've started it. Since, uh, you know, I might just do like all, all these videos in like two days, or I just might spread them out across a week. I don't know yet, so either way, it's been a journey for me, although I've just been sitting in one room talking into a microphone for about an hour and a half, but for you guys, it's uh, it's been uh, kind of interesting just learning about all these fun casual archetypes um, in my perspective, you know, like I would think it'll be interesting just to see what exactly these things can do and what exactly they add to the game, that's, that's always interesting to see. So today we are talking about roids. Um, I did save them for last because I did say I know absolutely nothing about them. So uh, I'll do my best in uh, analyzing these cards regardless of my lack of knowledge about the entirety of the archetype since GX was just one of those um, time frames in Yu-Gi-Oh where I just missed because I didn't watch the anime and I didn't really get into actual Yu-Gi-Oh until 5Ds or until like the end of GX where like Light of Destruction, that's when, you know, I actually started uh, learning all the real ins and outs of the game and not based on the anime. So, yeah, with uh, this Roid support, we got four cards just like uh, the rest of the archetypes, four new cards. With Roids, we got two monsters, one of them being a new big fusion, looks like a boss monster. Um, a field spell and a counter trap card, which uh, from just uh, first glance seems to have just about every relevant roid on there. Um, kind of like Transformers. So Mixeroid um, is level 4 wind machine type where you can tribute one machine type monster, including himself, so that automatically makes him pretty, pretty decent, especially when non-wind roid monster from your deck. Uh, I guess they did that. Um, just so that um, he can't really float himself, but I mean, I don't think that would be a big deal anyway. But also, um, since speed roids do also count as roids, I do think they're going to be very... Uh, the fact they chose non-wind is uh, just to make sure that you can't search like Terror Top for, like, for free. Um, you know, that would, that would actually be pretty cool. Just uh, tribute mix roids, especially not Terror Top. Terror Top search Talk and Tom Org, and then Free rank three, you yeah, know, that would be cool. Anyway, so you can pay half of your life points and banish any number of machine type monsters from your graveyard, including this card, especially from your extra deck, one roid fusion monster with the same level as the number uh, of those banished monsters, ignoring its summoning conditions, but destroy it during the end phase. So just for context here, um, let's see, roid fusion monster. You can technically summon out a elemental hero necro shaman. That's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, let's see, what's the lowest level roid fusion monster? Uh, from what I'm seeing here on Dueling Book, it's a uh, parasychroid, and he's level five. So at the very least, you're banishing five monsters to activate this graveyard effect. And. Uh, this deck being roids, um, I looked like I, I skimmed through most of the support, and it doesn't seem like a deck that can fill up uh, very fast. Um, it seems like a deck that's gonna take its time in doing certain things. Um, so I don't know how good that second effect is, but um, I, I guess it's better than nothing. Uh, it is a little sad that the monster is destroyed during the end phase, but. At least I guess to summon out monsters from an extra deck. Um, at the very least, even if you just happen to get five in your grave, like if you use like Future Fusion for like this big level 12 roid monster, you know, you can get like 12 roids in your graveyard. That, that, that might that might not be a bad idea. And then just banish them all for mixed roid. But unfortunately, um, the monster only stays for a turn. So it's not that good. If it was more like a Vayu, um, the Emblem of Honor, the Blackwing monster, where it just banishes uh, to summon out a Blackwing Synchro based on level only, you know, I think it would be a little better. But this guy doesn't negate the monsters, uh, the effect of the monster it summons. So it's probably a little more useful. 
Next, we have uh, Megaroid City, a field spell um, for roids. And what you can do is you can target one other card you control, destroy it. And if you do, add one roid card from your deck to your hand. Okay. So this search is just about any roid. It says roid card, too. So you search um, any monster, any roid spell or trap. Um, that's pretty cool. There's like Necroid, Synchro, and... Uh, Vicroid connection zone. I don't know. I don't know too much about roids again. Uh, during damage calculation, if your roid monster battles, you can summon a roid monster from your deck to the graveyard. Okay, so it looks like they do have their own way to mill roid monsters. And switch the original attack and defense of your battling monster during the damage calculation only. So, um, I do think this is made specifically for Mixeroid and some of the roid fusions. Just because, um... Mixeroid has 2200 defense, so, you know, um, in attack mode, it would have 2200 if it got its, uh, if Megaroid City actually uh, pulled that effect off. Unfortunately for Megaroid City, um, you can only use each effect once per turn, and you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck, except for fusion monsters, a turn you activate either of this card's effects. So... Um, this card would have been an amazing splashable tech card in like a lot of decks if it didn't have that clause to only summon off fusion monsters just because you could uh, tech it with speed roids and I, I do still think you can kind of mix speed roids with regular roids. Um, I think you could get away with that but um, this field spell doesn't really uh, accept the synergy. It, it doesn't it doesn't help synergize the two archetypes which I thought Konami might want to do just so that um, speed roids can become a little more playable because speed roids are a deck that I've never really seen in action and um, most people just look over them. Um, they only use uh, Terra Top as, as an engine and it's a, it's a little sad that Konami didn't want to at least try to mix these two archetypes um, a, a little better with like a field spell that can help both. I mean technically it does still search you um, roid cards so um, it does still help search you your singular terror top since it's limited, but you can't use well, just don't use terror top that turn. You know what I'm saying? So I I guess that's pretty cool. Um, it's just a, a little slow in my opinion. So next, our trap card is a emergeroid call. When a spell trap or monster effect is activated while you control a roid fusion monster, negate the activation and then send all cards with the same name as that card from a activating player's deck and extra deck to the graveyard. Okay, so it negates in a so while you control a roid fusion, which I don't think are easy to summon, like to be completely honest. It seems like you're gonna have a little trouble summoning some of these fusions. But if you get one out, you pretty much have a counter trap card that negates anything and um, make sure that all the copies of it are in the graveyard as well. Just uh, don't negate Dante with this. <laughs> Because Dante would just like go like all of them would just go off at once But still it's it's still a pretty uh, good card uh, pretty good negate card And it also has another effect that you can banish this card from the graveyard target one roid monster in your graveyard and then add it to your hand uh, That's pretty cool. Um, so if you wanted to you could play foolish burial goods and just uh, have a card that can uh, you know banish itself to um, add back roid monsters, which uh, I don't think it's worth running Foolish Burial Goods for, but it's something you can consider doing just because um, I think it'll be better just to keep the Emerge Roid call because the negating effect is just good enough by itself. But yeah, I, I think this is okay, you know, pretty cool. Um, and lastly, we're going into the extra deck where we have Super Vehicroid Mobile Base. So one roid fusion monster plus another roid monster. And, uh, you know, you can use speed roids for this as well, since, uh, you know, it's it just says any roid monster. Um, and for something so big, it's something requirements aren't really too hard to do. I, I, I don't think, like, because all you need is just one roid fusion and then just a way to summon out another fusion monster. Now, fortunately, you can't... Um, You can't use a future fusion to go into this just because it requires a monster from the extra deck. But um, it's still something that I think you could probably pull off if you 
like really have a good deck for it. So I think it's fairly easy to summon. Well, not easy, but fairly decent to summon. You're probably going to summon it like once every few games. Um, he does look a little bit like Opt uh, Optimus Prime. <laughs> he really does. And uh, I, I, I guess that's the whole joke with this, with this uh, Emergeroid call and like uh, Super Vehicroid. Like they, they, they do kind of look like Transformers. Um, so I, I guess that's pretty cool. So, you can target one face-up monster your opponent controls, special summon one Roid monster from your deck or extra deck with attack less than or equal to that monster. Now, if only the extra deck rules didn't actually apply. But, um, yeah, so you just, uh, so if you kaiju your opponent, I, I, I think that could be a real good strategy. Just kaijuing your opponent and then special summoning out any one of these Roid fusions from your extra deck. Does it say ignoring summoning conditions? Uh, no. So if there's any of these roids that have strict summoning conditions that can only be summoned by Fiji Summon, um, th those can't be summoned. But the ones that can are Parasycroid, um, Steam Gyroid, um, Super Vehicroid Stealth Union. I don't know how you're going to see a monster your opponent controls with less than or with 3600 attack. But, you know, if that just happens to be the case... You know, you can summon out suit, uh, Stealth Union as well. And uh, Mobile Base, he can summon himself as well. He can summon another copy of himself from the extra deck. I think that's pretty cool, actually. Um, so you can have two copies of him on board. That's, that's pretty crazy. And then you can only use that effect once per turn. But literally, any monster with more than 100 attack, he can summon out another copy of himself from the extra deck. And then, well, what level is he? He's like level 10? Uh, yeah, he's he's level 10 as well. So he can make real good, real good rank 10. So you could probably mix this deck with like trains or something. I don't know. But yeah, you see, he's fairly easy to summon. And then once you get one out, he can summon out more copies of himself. So that's pretty cool. And once per turn during the end phase, you can target one roid monster in your main monster zone other than this card. Return that monster you control to the hand, and if you do, move this card you control to that monster's monster zone. So he also gets to manipulate his own zone placement as well. So um, if you ever need just space in your uh, extra deck, I mean in your extra monster zone, then you know he just move himself during the end phase, and then next turn, um, you know you can summon out more uh, fusion monsters. So yeah, uh, this this support is pretty cool. It, it kind of makes me interested in roids. Um, I don't know if there'll ever be anything actually decent, but if you do actually pull out the super vehicroid and have like a few like one or two emergeroid calls, just set face down, and I, I think this deck could be pretty decent. I just think it needs a better way to summon out their fusion monsters, and I think we are looking at some real potential here. Um, because as they are right now, like, these Roid monsters by themselves, if you, like, skim through them, uh, not a lot of them have real good effects. Like, they're all pretty situational and not very good. They, they kind of remind me of, like, Ice Barriers. Like, they all have these weird um, situational effects that just don't synergize with each other at all. But once you get it going, I feel like it can be pretty fun and pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, uh, Roids are quite the, the interesting archetype and... Uh, a real nice way to end this series of uh, Legendary Duelist Dissected. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I definitely uh, enjoyed. Tell me, tell me what uh, your guys' favorite archetype from uh, the set is. Um, for me, it's still Water Dragons, but Roy did definitely pique my interest just now, just because of uh, their potential as like a deck and um, the support that they have is uh, pretty decent and. Definitely might be able to make the deck something way more playable than um, what it originally was. So, pretty cool. This is Nisha here, signing out. Peace out, guys.